friends, thanks for joining me for another video and today we're going to talk about something that's quite intimately related to gut health um, and your health in general and that is your level of energy. Um, you know, do you struggle to get out of bed in the morning? Do you have a slump in the afternoon or are you just flatlining throughout the day? Um, you've probably heard of the term adrenal fatigue, um, which is um, not exactly a scientifically based term, um, but it's quite a, f a common phenomenon, you know, it definitely exists. Um, and I've certainly experienced this before. Um, you could also call it burnout, um, which is, you know, it happens after a very high period of stress. And if you, if you think of it as a curve, you know, you've got your normal uh, homeostasis here where you're happy and you're, um, you're not stressed. You go into acute level of stress and over time, your level of resistance and resilience to stress whoop, plummets. And this is where you find yourself at burnout. And that's what's called adrenal fatigue. Um, and you know, it's quite a common problem and um, a lot of people are struggling with it. So I thought I'd make a video on, you know, how you can find out what stage you're in of the, of the stress uh, cycle and what you can do about it. So, You've probably heard of cortisol, um, maybe, um, which is your long-term stress hormone. You know, obviously adrenaline and noradrenaline are the ones that get you up and going in the short term, but cortisol is what's at work in the long term. And you know, cortisol can be raised um, to many stresses, um, you know, environmental stresses, uh, dietary stresses. It can be raised to uh, social stresses, to things like your finances and your relationships, and in exercise as well. So you know, your psychological state um, and your physiological state as well as your environment really contribute to the level of cortisol which is in your body. Now cortisol is a really important hormone, you know, it regulates your energy production and it's an anti-inflammatory hormone but it needs to stay within certain markers for it to be um, optimal for your health. When it's too low, you find that it's, not, it's unable to mobilize fatty acids for you to use as fuel. And it also regulates your blood sugar when you're in t um, when you're in terms of stress. So it also mobilizes sugars from the liver and the muscle into the bloodstream to give you um, a rush of sugar in the blood for energy. So when you have low cortisol, which is also known as hypocortisolism, you are unable to mobilize these fuels and use them for energy. And this is what happens first thing in the morning, which is when cortisol is high and it peaks within 30 minutes of you waking up, which you know gets you up and going, ready for the day, and it slowly tapers off throughout the day. And it tapers off so melatonin can kick in at night and send you to sleep. The opposite of that is hypercortisolism. And when, uh, when this occurs, you know, cortisol is elevated chronically over time, and this can actually cause um, you know, quite high surges in blood sugar, which can also lead to things like metabolic syndrome and um, high blood sugar. Um, also, you know, this is where you find yourself in, in the, uh, the peak of the stress response, because cortisol is actually elevated in the morning and it's elevated at night as well, and it can affect your sleep, um, which also interrupts the relationship with circadian rhythms and your ability to sleep. And if you get bad sleep because of high cortisol, you know, having bad sleep can actually further augment the, cort the elevated cortisol as well. Um, so it's really not an ideal situation. And, you know, you, you go from a state of normal cortisol to hypercortisol, and eventually the body is unable to deal with such high levels of cortisol because it actually in high levels can be damaging. It can actually cause the breakdown of muscle tissue and you know you lose a lot of your muscle mass and which is protective, it's great for metabolic health um, and it's just good for your health in general to have muscle mass. It breaks down your muscle mass, it can also um, in high amounts start, start catabolizing other tissues as a catabolic hormone. And it's actually quite closely implicated with cognitive impairments like depression and anxiety and it you know, can actually atrophy uh, the memory and learning center in your brain. So you actually get a lot of psychological symptoms from having high cortisol. Um, you know, and this is why stress is actually known as, um, you know, leading to depression. Um, and you know, when, when your body has had enough of high cortisol, it goes into defense mode. It essentially shuts down 
or tries to regulate the hyper secretion of cortisol, it just can't deal with that amount of stress anymore. So, you know, it, it down regulates receptors, it alters the negative feedback mechanism by which your hypothalamus and your pituitary signal for the release of cortisol from your adrenal glands. Um, and essentially, it might overshoot the requirements of cortisol to be, and it leads to hypocortisolism. And hypocortisolism is where you find yourself burnt out, you know. You don't have that cortisol to make you wake up in the morning. You flatline throughout the day. You don't have the the mobilization of um, fats, uh, proteins, and sugars for fuel. Um, you're also because cortisol is anti-inflammatory. Your level um, to which you're able to combat inflammation is also compromised. So, you know that's essentially going to open you up to infections and things like that. Um, and your immune system is going to be weaker as a result. So, you know, hypocortisol cortisol isn't, isn't ideal either, but that's the mechanism that your body has to go into to deal with um, the damage that high cortisol is doing. So, you know, depending on, you know, the symptoms, whether you're in stress and completely burnt out, you might want to take some measures to remedy this. And, you know, obviously first thing, is trying to deal with this stress, you know, if it's psychological stress, if it's a memory, if it's um, some sort of childhood uh, experience, you know, seek professional help to try and get to the roots of this stress, because this is what's driving cortisol in the background for a long time. Um, and also, you know, if it's something that you can directly deal with, then, you know, by all means, this can be the most profound thing you can do about it. Uh, a few things which can help really regulate cortisol in meditation, yoga, qigong, um, and other forms of exercise. Um, these are really going to help calm the stress response. Um, in, in addition to the um, sympathetic nervous system, which is your flight or fight response. So, so really uh, doing those things first is a good idea. In addition, you know, if you can make your diet as clean as possible, um, in terms of phytonutrient-rich, colorful, varied plants, Along, along with you know, good consumption of fatty acids from fish and uh, dark leafy greens and nuts and seeds. You can get good quality meats in as well, um, like grass-fed beef and some chicken. That's going to do wonders for your um, allostatic load, reducing the load of stress on your HP axis and your adrenal output of cortisol. Um, specifically though, some pretty handy things, depending on what level of uh, hyper or hyper cortisolism you're at is adrenal adaptions. Now these herbs are, are magical things and um, if you're actually hypocortisol then licorice root is an insanely good one for this because actually it really stimulates production of cortisol and can elevate your energy. Whereas if you're stressed um, you don't want to be taking licorice root because that's going to upregulate cortisol. So you want to be taking things like um, phosphatidylserine is very good for bringing down cortisol, it's actually um, an amino acid and a fatty acid combined, and it also is pretty good at combating the depression that can come with hypercortisolism. Mm. So, um, uh, and also if you're middle of the level, maybe you're subclinically hyper or subclin subclinically hypo, adrenal adaptogens like maca root, like rhodiola, like cordyceps, um, and like ashwagandha can really help you adapt to the stress. You know, they do fantastic things within the entire physiology and biochemistry of your body to help you better deal with stress. They give you the resilience back, they help regulate the secretion of cortisol and the upstream processes involved in cortisol secretion. Um, so, those are really what I wanted to share with you um, in terms of uh, regulating stress response. Of course, if your cortisol is elevated, it's going to have, and if it's low, it's going to have really you know, direct effects on your gut health, your mental health, and your health overall. So if you want to learn more about this, I'll put some articles in the link below, and um, I will also put some other resources down there which I think might be useful. Thank you for tuning in, guys, and there'll be more um, on these topics to come, I'm sure. Cheers.